Hello, I'm Josh Engelbretson, and welcome to this week's Atomic Game Engine video. This week, we're going to be covering Atomic's new 3D support, as well as JavaScript modules. But before we get started, I want to mention that at the end of the video, there is a text sheet that includes information and project links for some of the open source technology that Atomic is built on. Feel free to check that out. And now, let's get started. Okay, so I'm in the Atomic Editor. I have my project loaded. I can go ahead and crack open a scene. Uh, this is a light map scene. It's looking pretty good. Um, it's basically part of a modular system. And uh, this can be used to combine different nodes and models into all kinds of different ways. And I'll go ahead and look over here, just kind of zoom into this little bedroom area. So that's all looking pretty good. Uh, the light maps are nice and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So another thing that's new this week is uh, we have a skeletal animation with preview. This is a, a pretty grotesque zombie. I can kind of zoom in here and just take a look at his grotesque glory. I can also preview his animations uh, that are displayed over here on the right hand side. And uh, yeah, let's just look at his attack. Is what is a zombie without a good attack? All right, so one of the nice things is we actually already support having multiple scenes open at the same time. This is an outdoor scene. And we have some trains, some buildings, and all that. This scene actually has uh, JavaScript components attached to it. So I can go ahead and go in play mode. And we've got our zombie. We have our buildings. We have collision detection. And if I run on over here, Oosh! We've got some boxes that I just completely knocked over. Um, so yeah, the zombie has made quite a mess. I can go ahead and go into first person mode here and kind of run around and we can kind of see our zombie hands and zombie feet. Another thing I can do is I can go into a overhead view, kind of get a lay of the land, and I can actually move time forward and back. And as I do that, lights come on and off. We have kind of a nice little flickering effect here because the night. All right, so, and actually we do have a nice little horizon over there. Okay, so let's go back to the editor and let's just do a quick change. Uh, so I will open up my avatar script. And so all the logic inside this demo is in JavaScript. Uh, it's all right here, in fact. So this is all the camera code, this is the physics setup, the controls, all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and very simply take and make our jump force a lot bigger. So I can go back in, and now when I do that, <laughs> okay, so that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, we can go in and out of the engine extremely quickly. So let me go ahead and undo that. Okay. And now we're back to our normal, our normal jump speed. Okay. So, let me go ahead and go back out into the 3D view here. Whoops. It's all 3D. But these shadows are actually worth looking at. So the shadow maps are very, very stable, and they're also very, very high resolution. Let me go ahead and get the zombie, move him over here. And we can see that he actually, the shadow maps play very nicely across his skin. Okay, so next up, we're gonna look at some deployment. Okay, so the Atomic Game Engine supports deployment uh, to desktop, WebGL, Android, and soon iOS. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at the WebGL here. And it takes a moment. And I'm in the browser. And everything's working. We have our skeletal animation. We have our collision. We have our physics simulation. And I can go on out over here and boosh again into the boxes. And cause them to fall all over the place. Uh, yeah, so the terrain works and I can actually control the day and night cycles. The only thing that isn't working here is the WebGL shadows. That is something that we need to fix and we'll be looking at that soon. But otherwise, it's running great. 
And uh, so, yeah, next up, let's take a look at Android. Right here, uh, this is a NVIDIA Shield. So this is actually a Tegra 3. Um, Tegra 3 isn't even all that new anymore. So this is not exactly cutting edge Android technology, but uh, everything's running. It's all running great. We have real time shadows. Uh, the lighting is all working. There's terrain, the physics simulation. Uh, it's all looking really good. So, and it runs really well. The only thing I had to change uh, was I dropped the box count down a little bit. But otherwise, um, it's running great, and uh, we're very happy. I was actually quite surprised at the Android uh, speed out of the gate. That's uh, the power of the C++ code. So that's uh, also, as you'll see in the tech sheet, Euro 3D is an awesome baseline. <laughs> so definitely check that out in the tech sheet, too. Huge props to the, to the team there. Um, anyway, this is looking great. And so next up, we'll have a look at the new JavaScript module. So I'm back in my JavaScript file, and over in the resource view, there's a new modules folder. This is a common JS compatible module system. So any JavaScript I put in here, I can use require on. And that's the same function that's found in like Node.js. So in this case, I'm bringing in GeoMatrix off of GitHub with zero changes and using the Quaternion and Vector3 classes. So this is a great way of using external code, of sharing code between projects, and just keeping your things organized. Um, so yeah, that's a really important building block. So that's it. That's the that's the latest version of the Atomic Game Engine. Um, that's a lot since the last week, I guess. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting more work done on it. It's a lot of fun to work on. Um, so yes, coming up right after I say this is Josh Engelbretson from Thunder Beast Games, bringing you the Atomic Game Engine sometime in 2015. Uh, there will be the tech sheet that shows uh, some of the different open source technology that the Atomic Game Engine is built on. And definitely check that out. Um, until next time, see you later.